Hey guys and welcome back to a new Material 3 Expressive video. In this video I will show you how you can actually implement these different types of sliders in Material 3 design. Sliders were actually a thing that was already contained in the previous normal Material 3 design, but with a new Material 3 Expressive update they got quite a visual update. And I will now show you around through all these different types of sliders that we get with this Material 3 Expressive update and in which scenarios you should ideally use which of these sliders. So first of all, we will have a normal horizontal slider, as you can see here, optionally with multiple steps you can define. So if you maybe have 10 values and you can only lock in the slider here at specific positions, then this is something you can optionally define, or you make it a completely dynamic slider without these steps in between. That would also work for the horizontal one here. Like it works, for example, for this range slider, which is another slider, if the user should actually pick a value in a given range, then they have two of these handles in which, uh, with which they can actually drag this range here along to pick a value that falls in a given range. Same thing also works here in a vertical fashion. So for example, uh, if you, I don't know, you want to change the volume of something, then it's typically implemented in such a vertical fashion. You know, so that is absolutely doable. And you can also swap these values here around so that the green part would be at the bottom. So let's see how that would work in code. I'm here in a, in a plain Android Studio project, actually not on a plain one, but in the one that I've uh, started implementing here in this playlist. If you just randomly got to this video, make sure that you're using at least this Material 3 designed version in your version catalog. So at this point, you have to use the alpha version. At a later point, you may be fine with using the stable version, but right now we need the alpha version. Then we want to go to our root package and maybe create a sliders package. In the sliders package, we will then create a sliders composable file where I'm going to show you around these different slider options. So let's call this composable sliders. And in here, let's actually start with a normal slider. So that is the plain horizontal slider without any range, without it being vertical, where we have two overloads. And if we take a look, actually three overloads. And if we take a look here, there are, well, different types of parameters we can pass. On the one hand, uh, this is probably the most simple one. We can just pass a value, so a float value that reflects the current position of the slider. So it could just be, for example, a value between zero and one F, but you can completely choose um, what your value range is with this parameter here, which is called value range. So let's maybe define this here as a composable state because obviously it can change in some way. So value, let's call it slider one. By remember, mutable state of, actually it's a mutable float state here, initially zero F, so we may start at the left side of the slider, or you could say you start in the middle by passing in 50%. That's of course up to you. Make sure to import this by hitting Alt Enter here twice. And then I would say we pass this here to the value state of the slider. So we pass a value slider one. And when that value changes, so this lambda is now invoked, whenever the user drags a little bit, then we get the new value here, which we can pass to our value slider one state. And that way we update it and immediately reflect it on the slider again. And this would already be a very, very minimal slider. So if we take a look in main activity and we add the slider here to our hierarchy, so our sliders composable column that we already have that centers this content, and we then take a look here and launch this app, then we should already see a very minimal slider. But I'll of course also show you how we can configure this a little bit. Look, there we go. We have our slider starting at the middle position, 50%, and we can drag this around. That's already a working slider. We should add some padding here, by the way, so it doesn't go to the absolute edges of our screen. Let's just give this 16 dp of padding and then it will look a bit nicer like this. And then we can also deal with this handle a bit more flexibly. So let's take a look at what else we can configure here with the slider. Well, modifier should be clear. Enable should also be clear. You can enable and disable this uh, slider so that the user can or can't drag the value handle. Value range is by default a 0 to 1 F. So that's the default. If you say, hey, I actually want to have values between 0 and 100F, that is uh, how you can change that. Here, this is interesting. This steps integer range can now be used to define these intermediate steps that I've shown you before. Um, so if you don't want to allow every single position here of the slider, then you can say you maybe have 10 steps. And then you can see, we see 10 steps where the slider pretty much locks in. Then what else can we define here? Interaction source, well, that is if you want to really observe the drag state here in some way, you can pass that and observe that. Alternatively, you can also observe these details about the slider with the other overload here that takes in the slider state. So we can have a slider state here, 
we get with remember slider state, alt enter to opt into this experimental API. And then with this slider state here, in this case, it wouldn't take value in and on value change, but it will just require us to pass the state. So state is equal to slider state. Then we don't need to define these steps here because these are defined with the state itself. It's really just an optional way of uh, defining such a slider. You can see now if you wanted to define these steps and the initial value, you would do this with here, this overload value, steps uh, on value, change finished. So when the user has finished dragging, you can define the range here as well. So let's say the initial value is uh, 0.5f again. Then you can see here, this is just what we had before where we manually defined the state. What is the advantage of this one here? Uh, well, the slider state in the end just gives you more information about the current state of the entire slider. So we can use this to observe certain extra information, like whether we're currently dragging the value range. You can get the value as a fraction. You can pass an on value change lambda should auto snap. So whether the uh, handle should uh, automatically snap probably to the end and the, and the start or to the intermediate steps that you've uh, defined. Or you could also dispatch a raw delta to just add something to the handle. So to programmatically actually change the, the handle's position. So if you need this more fine-grained control, you can use the slider state here instead. What you can also do is, if you really need this flexibility, you can define a thumb composable. So if you want to have a, a custom look of your drag handle, you can see if we don't pass anything, then it's just... But you could pass any type of composable content here. So for example, a text, drag me. And then we have this drag handle here as a drag me text, which we can drag here. Well, um, if you want to have a custom designed slider, this is how we can completely configure this while getting the behavior of the slider itself from the slider composable. Same thing you can do for the actual track. So the track is this green bar here, where you can now say, okay, you get this state in here, which is the slider state, because with this information from the state, you need to, of course, show or know how your track should look like, how much of that should be filled and so on. So you can use this as a piece of information, but then I don't know, you could have your own kind of track here with a box modifier background, color red, for example, will look extremely ugly right now, but you will get the idea if we do this and probably you need to relaunch. No, do we need to maybe fill the size? Fill max size? Uh, yeah, okay. This is now your slider. It's not what we want, but uh, just to show you that you can completely configure this track here as well. Better remove this again as well as the thumb. But what's important to understand is that you have this option and you don't need to implement a completely custom slider if you have a custom, if you just have a custom design in the end for your slider. Now, this is a simple, plain horizontal slider. As I've mentioned, you can also have this range slider where the user can not only have a single handle to drag with, but also a second one to select a range. And that works with an actual value range. So value range by remember mutable state of, and let's say the initial range that is selected goes from 0.4F to 0.6F. So 40 to 60% is the initial selected range. And we can then have a range slider where we can pass this value here. So our range, which is nothing else than a float range as we've defined here. And when this changes, well, then we can just assign this range here to our uh, value range. And this must be a var here, actually. So we can change it. And then you can see our range sliders here. We can flexibly choose a range here for the slider. So it's really the same concept as this slider, just with the difference that you have two handles here you can use to drag. Same thing here. Uh, in this case, you just have two of these thumbs, so two of these drag handles that you, that you could also define here with your custom composable. You can also define steps for this range slider. What else? Uh, you have two interaction sources, so one for each handle. If you want to, for example, observe when the drag is, uh, when, when the finger is down on a specific handle, uh, that is what you could use an interaction source for. And other than that, it's really the same as such a horizontal slider. If you want to use a vertical one, well, we can use exactly the same, just in a vertical fashion. So vertical slider here. This one will need an additional Material 3 API. And then we have this vertical slider here. So here, I think it's a little bit bugged because uh, we use the slider state for both sliders. So let's, let's maybe have the slider state here and here a separate one 
and then we have our vertical slider because we have independent slider states. If you want this slider to start from the bottom so that the bottom part is filled green, then this vertical slider actually has the reverse direction boolean, which you can set to true, and then it will look like this, which is what I would expect as a more natural slider, for example, for changing the volume of something. And what else? I think other than that is really the same as the horizontal slider. What is maybe worth mentioning here is that the sliders can also be used with a thicker track after all. So according to Material 3 design, we can use sliders here. Can I quickly show you that here under sliders? Um, here, something like this is possible. I personally haven't yet found a way to change the, the thickness of this slider, at least in a simple way. Maybe this is something that they will keep on implementing because right now we're using an alpha version of Material 3 design. But there are different types of thicknesses that are allowed here. You can check this on the Material 3 website for sliders here under guidelines, I think. Yeah, there are different types of sliders outlined, which ones you can use. You can also then down below, I think, check the actual dimensions right here. Those are all the different sizes with specific size values that are allowed or recommended for Material 3 design for all different types of sliders, depending on how important the option is to the user on a given screen. Cool, I think this is really not rocket science. Uh, if it is, then comments are open, ask your questions there. And other than that, if uh, you like these free videos here, then uh, we actually also have premium content on our website that you are very welcome to check out. So be it premium courses and mentorship programs about Android and Kotlin multi-platform or gamified communities where we really want to push you to practice your skills, increase your confidence afterwards that way by just taking all these topics you may learn in these free videos and really applying these in a safe but real world environment. So if that's something for you, check out the Mobile Dev Campus, check out our courses, check out the mentorship program, everything we show on the website, links down below. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video, next Material 3 Expressive video as well. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.